This podcast is brought to you by Most Valuable Podcasts, leading the league in podcasting entertainment. What's up, what's up, everybody? Ricky Widmer here, along with the one, the only, Brandon Swanee Swanson. Hey, hey, hey. And we are back for another baseball topic this week as... The Brewers are just breaking my heart. Bro. We <laughs> talked about the Brewers last week. And I'm like, yeah, you know, they can get you, Darvish. It ain't going to help them win the c- Central. It's not going to help them win the Central. But And it wasn't. What they did, though, that made me a little scared, shaking in my little cub boots, is first they acquired Kristen, Christian Yelich, outfielder, center fielder, from the, not Florida, the Miami Marlins, used to be the Florida Marlins years ago. And um, I believe they got four prospects from the Brewers for Christian Yelich. So they give up four prospects, they get Christian Yelich. I'm like, oh, okay. That's a pretty big big trade, pretty big move. I like Christian Yelich. I remember Mike Rankin, when he used to be with MVP, used to tell me all the time that he wanted the Cubs to go after a Christian Yelich. Then the big hammer dropped, and like moments later, after they made that trade, Lorenzo Cain, five year, 80 millions to the Brewers, and my jaw hit the floor, Brandon. My jaw hit the floor. Let me ask you this Will Yelich and Kane, the both of them coming together, are they going to make the Brewers serious contenders, not only for the Central, but for maybe the World Series? <sighs> Yeah, I think they I think they could. I th- I really think they could. I think the Brewers could use one more um starting pitcher, not you Darvish. Well they and, got bad Elbers. And, and <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well I said not you Darvish, but I also never said Matt Albers either. But um I think that they could use one more arm in the starting rotation, mm-hmm. an Alex Cobb type. Um, you know, somebody like that, Lance even Lynn, a Lance like Lynn, not Anthony week. Lynn, but a Lance Lynn. You like how you um, said they need a starter and I go ahead and tell you, oh, I'm Matt Albers and he's a reliever. <laughs> yes. Um, but w- the White Sox had Matt Albers start for a little bit. Mm-hmm. That's how That's in dire straits we only, were. But it's the only way I know Bat Albers. But here's the thing. When you get to Lorenzo Cain, you get to Christian Yelich. Christian Yelich is this guy who can play in the outfield mm-hmm. and He's also a guy who's gotten to the point where he's given you 20 home runs consistently. Mm-hmm. So his power is there from the left side of the plate. And then you've got Lorenzo Kane in center field, who is the best in terms of range. He's one of the best in terms of uh, advanced stats and everything like that. The guy can get to the ball like none other. I believe... He is he is he is a tremendous outfielder. I believe the internet meme goes the world like two thirds of the world is covered by water, the rest is covered by Lorenzo Cain. Yes, like that's that's what the meme used to be when he was with the Royals. Yes, but this move like for me took it a little personally because you know this is a team that finished right behind us in the Central. I, as a Cub fan, Cub fans are probably going to tell us, Ricky, don't be scared. We got one of the best rosters in baseball. But like I was listening to, I think it was um, Carmen and Yurko today on ESPN 1000, is I'm a little scared. And the reason why I'm scared is, yeah, we have a good roster. However, if we don't get a, a signing like a Lance Lynn and Alex Cobb, like if we don't get another starter, if we don't get like a Jake Arrieta back and he maybe goes to Milwaukee, if the Cubs don't get a U Darvish, if we don't make another move for a pitcher to kind of sure up our starting rotation, I might be nervous that the Cubs might lose the NL Central this year to the Milwaukee Brewers. Now, I know it's a long season and teams can get hot and cold and just because you sign these guys doesn't mean it's all going to click right away. However, the Cubs have been in a situation where, like, when we, the year we played the wild card game against the Pirates, lost to the Mets in the NLCS, I wasn't exactly worried. So I'm like, oh, look at our farm system. We've got, like, a ton of the top 100 prospects for Keith Law. We're going to be good. Well, now, to kind of 
get some guys to win a World Series. We had to give up prospects, obviously, when we got a role as Chapman, gave up some prospects when we got Mike Montgomery. We made some moves to bring some guys in. We only have right now two of the top 100 prospects, I believe, in Keith Law's minor league prospects. I wouldn't be surprised if the Brewers win the Central next year and the Cubs have to be a wild card team in order to make the playoffs. Yeah, so after you're done whining and moaning about well, the Cubs. I'm going to whine. Um, well, of course, you're a Cub fan. But um, Kane wouldn't be – this is this is what um, Fox Sports mm-hmm. has, says. Kane wouldn't become the Royals' starting center fielder until 2013. He had over 300, both 2014-2015. Mm-hmm. Um, Kansas City made the World Series both times, winning it all in 2015. Now, he made – that team, especially in the playoffs, they don't they don't win the World Series without Lorenzo Cain, two ninety five career hitter, thirty one playoff games, MVP of the twenty fourteen ALCS, and he batted five thirty three. This guy is phenomenal, and mm-hmm. he's thirty two years old. He's thirty two years old, and he's not slowing down. And another, I think thing, he's doing the TB twelve workout. And another but, thing, um, I'm looking at is hold on, hold on, hold on, is that. You look at a potential projected starting lineup mm-hmm. for Milwaukee. You've got Kane at the top, potentially, or Yelich. It could go either way, but most likely Kane, I think. Kane in center field, Yelich in like a right field. And yes, and then Yelich in right field, Tames over at first base. That's the thing. Or Ryan or, Braun. Or Ryan Braun, he said supposedly. He, he said he wouldn't mind playing first if it meant Brewer success. But then Ryan Braun in the fourth spot, Travis Schott, five, Steven Vogt. At six, RC is seven, Jonathan VR at eight, and then your pitcher. That's pretty darn good. Mm-hmm. And finally, Eric Thames, Ryan Braun, Travis Shaw, they've all got protection. You've got Lorenzo Kane and Yelich right at the top. Those are two really good guys that you have right at the top of your lineup. And that is that is something, honestly. Sometimes you don't have to do a whole lot. I know signing a guy five years, eighty million, and then trading four good prospects to get another one can be seen as a lot. But sometimes you don't have to just dump everything, change everything around. Just need to insert a couple of different things. You add two guys to the top of the lineup, to the top of the order. Mm -hmm. You put in two tremendous outfielders, and boom, you have an NL Central championship. Well, and that's the thing that, like, you reading off that lineup, actually I'm getting chills down my back of my neck. My hair is starting to stand up, getting a little goosebumpy over here. And the thing for me is the thing that I think back to, and I'm going to play this off of experience with my favorite team, the Cubs. You look at 2016, the year we won the World Series. What did we have that we didn't have? In 2017, because I'm saying this is a joke, like a traitor went over to uh, to the to the red side down there in St. Louis. That's Dexter Fowler. We had him 2016, solid leadoff guy. All of tw- most of 2017, we were figuring out who's going to be our leadoff guy. And for most of the season in 2016, except for a few games. Late in the se- late in the season, they changed it. But I mean, when we ended that season against the, I'm going last regular season game, we had a starting lineup, a top five of Fowler into Bryant into Rizzo into Zobrist into Russell. Like that's what the the Brewers could potentially, and I'm not saying same level of caliber talent, but when you have a guy at the leadoff spot and you have someone right behind him that's a solid bat who can then go into your power guy at three, then into a contact guy at four, the Brewers could be assembling their same quality of a lineup like my Cubs had in 2016 towards the end of the season, where, like I said, Fowler into Bryant into Rizzo into Russell, good luck into Zobers then the Russell, good luck with that starting five before you then get to Hayward, maybe a Baez, a Contreras, a Soler. The end of the order was where we kind of mixed things up with however crazy Joe Madden wanted to do it. But really, to me, out of the two, Yelich and Kane, Kane's the one that's the most important because it's getting that leadoff guy 
that you can consistently say, yeah, he's great in the field, but this is going to be our leadoff guy. This is going to be the guy to where we don't have to worry about who's going to lead off today. It's going to be Lorenzo Cain, and he's going to start the game off right. Yeah, he is. And I know that people may say, well, Lorenzo Cain, he's 32 years old. Is, you know, isn't he slowing down? Personally, I don't think he is. I, I don't see any. Look, you I, I really TB12. Yeah, well, obviously. I mean, I just I think they're on the same the same diet and mm-hmm. workout. But I, I think that with with Lorenzo Cain, you can see I mean, the speed is still there. The quickness mm-hmm. is still there. The hitting is still there. I, I mean, I think that he is still hitting pretty well as well as well. I mean, in his in his last couple of years in Kansas City, he was hitting well. Um, and then you've got you've got him at 32. You've got Yelich at, at a prime age at 26. And these two guys, I mean, th- what a duo to get to put in the outfield along with Ryan Braun if he does indeed stay over there in left field. Mm-hmm. And the Brewers did exactly what I said that they should do. And obviously they didn't do it because I mentioned it. Um, it, cer- it certainly wasn't because of me. But they went and they spent their money elsewhere, mm-hmm. you know, and, and they still probably could sign you Darvish if they wanted to. I wouldn't advise it, but um, I I think that what they did, going and getting some bats, going and, get, and getting some outfielders, guys who can make an impact every single day instead of every fifth, huge, a huge deal for the Milwaukee Brewers. And I know, Ricky, I, honestly, I think it almost pains you to be able to, to have to do this podcast uh, well the, right now the show with me because today especially because well, you're I'm just a sky this is, is fallen guy too <laughs> you, you are you really are you i can't I just i'm a sky i'm sorry fall, i've got to stop i've got to stop because i'm looking over at you and it looked like you just ate a bad meal or something <sighs> because you're you're sitting I'm over there over, you're hunched I'm, over your head's looking down you're thinking of all the ways <laughs> that you could jump out of a seven story building if the cubs don't win this year well, i man, mean it's, i don't want to hurt myself too much just seven, enough, that's why it's seven enough, stories enough to feel the impact but You'd feel still it. walk away fine <laughs> so a two story impact maybe a one story maybe, maybe not off even the mo- maybe off the monkey yeah, bars maybe off the pitching mount maybe maybe that's how high i'm going a little bit of elevation there. <laughs> mm-hmm. But it's just, it's really kind of funny to look at you because it's pretty pathetic, but it is funny. Well, um, I'm looking right I, now. I, just, I can see the wheels turning of how you're already looking at it as the Cubs are going to just lose the NL Central to the Brewers. But let me tell you, though, is that it's the not going to be for sure, but it's going to be the, tough. The Milwaukee Brewers are making a statement. Mm-hmm. They are coming and they are hungry this well, year. It, let's be honest. There were probably some Brewer fans last year that thought they should have won the Central. But yeah, well, they, like, they especially there was a there was a patch after them being so yeah. good. They just stunk. and let's be honest. Early on in the year, we were looking at the Cubs going, "Holy crap, is the World Series hangover for real?" And then I believe there was a part where uh, Joe Madden even said, "Hey, you know what? Like the, the hangover is real. We're hungover right now. I don't know what team I'm looking at." And I mean, I'm just looking at Lorenzo Cain stats and just the last four years for Lorenzo Cain. You were talking about speed. Stolen bases, 28, 28, 14, 26. Then you look at his average. 301, 307, 287, 300. Then I'm going to go to on base percentage. 339, 361, 339, 363. And then slugging percentage, 412, 477, 408, 440. Besides that 2016 year, like... Every time I said something that was the lowest or tied for the lowest, it was 2016. Like that 2016 season where he only played 103 games that year, that was the lowest statistical stat line that he's seen in the last four years. Other than that, I'll take 26 to 28 stolen bases, almost 30 stolen bases from my center fielder and my leadoff guy. I'll take a guy who's got a war of a 5-7-2, 5-3, and that 2016 was his lowest at 2-9. I will take those numbers from my leadoff guy and my center fielder, especially when I'm trying to compete with a team that A, has won the World Series, B, has a couple powerhouses on their team, and three, when they didn't even win the World Series and lost the NLCS the year before, we were talking about them being a dynasty with Theo Epstein. So, I mean, I look at this Brewer team and Lorenzo Cain's the guy. If Like, Kristen Yelich, yeah, that's a good trade. 
he's a good piece. But the reason we're talking about the Brewers today is because of Lorenzo Cain, because he is going to be the better addition than Yelich will be, although Yelich is going to help this team. I will disagree with that. I think Lorenzo Cain, as great as he is, I think mm-hmm. I think he's. I mean, I think he's really good. I've already said everything I feel about Lorenzo Cain. I think Christian Yelich is going to be an outstanding, uh, an outstanding trade, and so do the Brewers. Oh, I'm not saying they, it's not. It's a bad but, trade. But, but what I'm, but what I'm saying, you're you're getting a guy that's you know 26 years old. Mm-hmm. You give up four really good prospects to get him, and. This guy is going to be good. If you just if you look Christian Yelich, let's look at 20, 2015 to tw- to twenty seventeen. In twenty fifteen, mm-hmm. his seven homers, forty four RBI, sixteen stolen bases, a three hundred batting average, a three sixty six on base, four sixteen slugging. Twenty sixteen, pops all the way up to twenty one home runs, ninety eight RBIs, nine stolen bases. 298 batting average on bases 376 slugging is 483 and then in 17 18 homers 81 RBIs 16 stolen bases batting average 282 on base 369 slugging 439 this is a guy that the Brewers need Lorenzo Cain isn't always going to mm-hmm. continue to be he's not going to be a 20 home run guy not no. his thing He's going to he's going to steal you 20 bases Get or on more base, steal me and that's bases. what he does yeah. and he has a gr- good batting average. What it, what um Christian Yelich is going to be able to do is he's going to be able to hit home runs, he's going to be able to drive in runs and he's going to be able to produce for you in yeah. that way. They didn't have that guy last year. They didn't have that guy because they mm-hmm. had Braun, they had Thames, they had um Shaw they didn't in in the time when when those guys were struggling, they needed a Yelich. Here's the and thing. they didn't have him, and now they do. I'm going to clarify. Not saying that the trade for Yelich is like push it to the side doesn't matter. I'm saying out of the two, if I had to pick, like if if they didn't sign Lorenzo Kane, I don't think I am as sky like I'm the sky's not falling for me as a Cub fan. The Brewers got tougher. I'm looking at you now. I see you over there and what you're doing, but the sky ain't falling yet if you just get Yelich. Cause, see, that surprises cause me a think, little Because think about it. My text message is to you. Oh, I know. The first one was, damn, they got Christian Yelich. Good move. Then they get Lorenzo Cain, and it was, what the, f- what's going on here? Like, I, I was panicking already. Yeah, I know. Here's what I want to ask you, though. Mm-hmm. Getting away from the Cubs, because that's my team... What about the Cardinals? What does this mean for the Cardinals? Are they now the odd team? Because let's be honest, Pirates and Reds, go to the cellar. We're not going to talk about you anymore. The Cardinals, though, based off of what's been going on this offseason with them, not saying they're completely going to be out of it, but if you're a Cardinal fan, do Cardinal fans sit there and go, damn, this this division got a little harder are we going to be consistently that third team now behind the Cubs and the Brewers? Uh, they could be. They could be. And I know that the Cardinals just, what, the other day uh, traded Randall Grichuk mm-hmm. um, away as well. And, and and Randall, I thought, was one of their you know pieces that they wanted to continue to move forward with. I was wrong. Um, but To I, the Blue Jays. Yes. I think that... I think that Milwaukee has positioned themselves in a really good spot, and they mm-hmm. are ahead of the Cardinals. Yeah, the in Car- my in my mind, they are. The Cardinals traded him in exchange for um, a right-handed pitcher in Leon, and then minor league right-hand pitcher um, Connor Green. That's where who they got for um, Gretchen. I I I do think that Milwaukee has. They've done. I am impressed with the Milwaukee Brewers. I really am because. They saw what they did last year, and they saw that they were this close. Mm-hmm. And they didn't just go, you know, maybe if we bring a couple of guys up, maybe if we're better in these stretches next year, we'll be okay. No, no. They weren't going to just sit by and hope. They went out, they got something, and then they got something else two minutes later. Mm-hmm. And now they've said, all right, we're ready. Let's go. And, and I love that. I absolutely love that because teams that just sit back and rest on their laurels and go, well, you know, maybe if with, with what we've got, maybe it'll just be better a little bit. But no, you're going to be a loser because you're a loser. Mm-hmm. Um, you've, if a winner goes out, does stuff, grabs the bull by the horns and says, okay, we're hungry, let's eat, and they go and do it. And that is 
what excites me about the Milwaukee Brewers, and I love Lorenzo Cain. I'm I'm, I'm a huge White Sox fan, but I love the Royals well, family in Kansas City, so I loved watching him. And I just I love I love being able to see good productive players. And Lorenzo Cain, like I said, he's not going to be productive mm-hmm. necessarily with the stick for for home runs. Mm-hmm. He can hit some, and he will, but. He's going to get on base for you. He's going to score a lot of runs. He's going to steal bases. He's going to be a guy who gets in the mind of the pitcher when he's on base. And he does so many things that way where Yelich is the guy who hits the home runs. He drives in runs. He can steal some bases. And he's going to have a pretty good batting average for you. The two guys that they just got, the little bit of an, uh, the veteran and the young guy, Yelich could be locked up through 2022. And that's another thing. That's why I think that Yelich is going to be a guy who stability is going to provide a little bit more long term mm-hmm. than what uh, Lorenzo Cain will because he's younger. Because he's younger. And I think that uh, with, with that now, Christian Yelich, quite honestly, he is probably being underpaid right now. And the Brewers are looking at having a guy for pretty much a, a steal outside of the prospects, of course. Um, Payment-wise, it's it's a pretty team-friendly contract. Mm-hmm. And the thing that I'll do, and this is what I'll end it, and then your final thoughts is, if I'm speaking, taking my Cubs fandom and putting it to the side... Which you're unable to do. I love the moves that the Brewers did. They made themselves better. But bringing that Cubs Good fandom for back you. in... Good for you! I, I hate the moves that they just did, and I just got ten times more worried about this season. The thing that I will say, going to your response of teams that go out there grabbing what they want, Yankees this offseason. Let's go ahead and grab the bull by the horns. We're getting Giancarlo. Let's go ahead and the Astros, yeah, we just won the World Series. We're getting a Garrett Cole. The Giants, we need to get back into the swing of things. We're getting an Andrew McCutcheon. The Cubs, the year we won the World Series, we need a closer. Fuck it. We're giving you prospects. We are going to bring in a Contreras to lock down that closer role in that bullpen. Well, I'm going to use him so much he'll go three innings if I have to. That's what Joe was basically Not saying. Contreras. for Contr- wasn't it? Wasn't it? No. Um, What's his name? I can't think of it right now. Why can't I think of it? He was the Yankee. Yeah. It uh, wasn't it? Con- no, it was not. It was not Contreras. Oh, what was I'm his name? Jump, I'm jump cutting here because that's an idiot thing to do. What was his name? Uh, Aroldis Chapman. Yeah. Aroldis Chapman. Okay. okay. I, I, you were going to be jumped on. I, I knew was. It, so. I know. I know. I was going to say Jose Contreras. <laughs> 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 no, he was on our team. He's retired. <laughs> Hosey. Oh, okay. G-O-C. Or like when the Cubs won the World Series in 2016, you know what? Screw it. We're going to give you prospects for a role this Chapman yeah. before he went back to the dark side. And basically, <laughs> we gave up. Pro- but it was a rental. I I got my World Series, so I'm happy with it. I'm not going to harp on it. Any final thoughts about the Brewers getting Kane and Yelich and Possibly making them serious contenders. Yeah, I think it's I think it's a great great couple of moves by the Milwaukee Brewers. I'm really happy for them because you know that that brings not only excitement to your team but it brings a lot of excitement for the fans and 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 not to say that it's for the for the fans the moves mm-hmm. aren't but well winning you know, is for w- the fans. winning winning is for winning is for the fans as as much as you want to do it for yourself you mm-hmm. want to win for the fans you want to win in front of your fans and you want to keep your fans involved and engaged and excited about your team and that's what the Milwaukee Brewers have done so. Hats off to you, Milwaukee. But another thing I wanted to say really okay. quickly about teams, you just said it, about teams that are going out and trying to get something and go Bull and say, hey, horns. yes, exactly. The Yankees have done it. The Astros have done it. The Giants have done it. The Mo- Milwaukee Brewers now have done it. Mm-hmm. And why are the Boston Red Sox still sitting, not trying to get J.D. Martinez? Yeah, J.D. Martinez is That is, is, that still is one of the there. questions that I have because he's still out there, but Milwaukee – Hats off to you. Well, before I go ahead and sign things off, I'm bringing it full circle back to the Primetime Podcast. If you guys haven't checked that out, go ahead and check it out. Uh, North Carolina lost, Brandon. They did. 82-78. So they just did. wanted to let you know there as my Illini are winning as we are recording this. But thank you guys for checking out this segment. If you like the baseball stuff, let us know down below in the comment section. Also, let us know what you think of the Brewers' moves and does it make them serious contenders this upcoming season. I want to thank you guys for the watching on YouTube, and as always, have a good day, everybody. 